There are going to be consequences. There are going to be con — when they fire our people, our great people, who have been working for 25, 30 years at these companies, they fire our people. There are going to be consequences. It doesn't work that way. Not anymore. And the politicians have been working on this problem for 15 years, for 20 years, and it's so simple to solve. Delphi laid off 3,627 workers and moved their jobs to Mexico and other countries. FTE Automotive laid off 166 workers in Auburn Hills, beautiful place, and moved their jobs to Mexico. Chrysler laid off 5,300 workers and moved their jobs to Mexico, China, and to other countries. Ford laid off 2,155 workers and moved their jobs to Mexico and many other countries. Now Ford is moving all of its small car production to Mexico. Isn't that wonderful? It used to be the cars were made in Flint and you couldn't drink the water in Mexico. Now the cars are made in Mexico and you can't drink the damn water in Flint. What the hell? Is that true, though, or what? Unbelievable. You know, I have a friend. He's the biggest in the world at building plants. That's what he does. He builds plants. If you said, build an apartment, he wouldn't know what to do. He builds plants, the biggest plants in the world, most sophisticated plants, all kinds of plants. I said, how are you doing? He's from this country. Loves this country. Loves this whole area. Loves you people. He wants to do them here. So I said to him, let me ask you, how are you doing? He said, unbelievable. I said, oh, that's good. That's good. Where are you doing well, Mexico? I said, what about our country? Not so good. He said, Donald, you have to see what we're doing in Mexico. We're building some of the greatest plants anywhere in the world. And I said, isn't this sad? Isn't this pathetic? We're going to change it around. I want Mexico to build great plants, but we're going to build great plants also. It's got to be a two-way street, folks. Got to be a two-way street. And right now, it's a one-lane highway right into these other countries. They take our money. They take our jobs. They build their plants. They build their factories. We end up with unemployment and drugs. That's what we end up with. Not going to happen any longer. A Trump administration will stop the jobs from leaving America and we will stop the jobs from leaving Michigan. That I can tell you 100 percent. If Ford or another company wants to fire their workers in Michigan and move to another country and ship their products back into the United States, I will pick up the phone myself if I can, because I love it. They don't want me to do that, folks. I want to do it. It's so easy. I love doing it. It's like I'm a natural. But I'll have plenty of great representatives. But we, we, I'm going to do it every once in a while. I don't care. Because I love it. We'll be calling the executives at Ford or whatever company is, and we'll tell them very nicely that if they want to move their factory or their plant to another country, they will have to pay a 35 percent tax when they sell their cars or their product back into the United States through what will soon be a very, very powerful border. So they'll pay a tax. And here's what's going to happen 100 percent. Nobody's moving, folks. They're not going to move. They're not going to move, okay? Just think of it. Don't worry about it. We'll build a wall. Don't worry about it. A Trump administration will renegotiate NAFTA, and if we don't get the deal we want, we will terminate NAFTA and get a much better deal for our workers and our companies, 100 percent.
We will also immediately stop the job-killing Trans-Pacific Partnership, which Hillary Clinton called the gold standard. And she lied. Look, she lied. During the debate, by the way, did Trump win the debate? Did Trump win the debate? And by the way, he's here. Did Mike Pence win the debate? Man, was that an easy debate. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But he certainly made it look easy, didn't he? How good is this guy? Wow. Honestly, I felt so sorry for Tim Kaine. That was like, that was like a great football team playing your local high school football players. So Hillary lied about it. She said it was the gold standard, and we caught her in the lie and all of that. But when you think about it, it is the gold standard. It's the gold standard for the other countries, not for us, for the other countries we're doing business with. Can't do it. Hillary will pass the TPP. She will absolutely pass it, which will destroy the rest of the auto industry. Believe me, it will, just mark my words, it will destroy. They don't even talk about currency manipulation in TPP, and they didn't want to because it was taken out, because some of our politicians wanted it taken out, their number one weapon. They wanted it taken out because the special interests take care of our politician folks, but they're not taking care of me. I've spent a fortune on this campaign. And I'll tell you, I told this to Mike Pence. If we don't win, because everyone's saying unbelievable, unbelievable, it doesn't matter if you win or lose, there's never been a movement like this. I said, let me just tell you, stop right there. If we don't win, this will be the single greatest waste of time, energy, and money in my life. We have to win. To do what we have to do, we have to win. We can't just have something that looks wonderful in the history books in 30 years. As part of our plan to bring back jobs, we are going to lower taxes on American business from 35 percent to 15 percent. Stop and talk to them about what's at stake in this election, because North Carolina is key. And it's not only important for our election. Are you ready to elect Roy Cooper as your next? to elect Linda Coleman, your lieutenant governor. And how about Dan Blue the third for state treasurer? And I really, really hope you will send Deborah Ross to Washington. and Michelle in Philadelphia. You know, the President was talking about how absolutely consequential this election is, and of course it is. I, I really believe it's the most important election of our lifetimes because we've never had a clearer choice. Never. It is a choice between division or unity, between strong, steady leadership or a loose cannon who could risk everything. It's a choice between an economy that works for everyone, not just those at the top. And it, it is a choice that really goes to the heart of who we are as Americans. 
What I saw before I came in and what I see now is a sense of potential, of joy. There is no reason, my friends, why America's best days are not ahead of us if we reach for them together. We don't have to accept a dark and divisive vision for America. Tomorrow you can vote for a hopeful, inclusive, big-hearted, Our core values are being tested in this election, but my faith in our future has never been stronger. I love our country, and I believe in the American people. And I know if we bring everyone together, we can set goals, and we can move toward them, and we can feel that sense of accomplishment that comes with being part of something bigger than ourselves. great privileges of crisscrossing the country as I have in this campaign is meeting remarkable people, people who stand up against the odds, people who, like my late mother, people who understand that everybody gets knocked down. What matters is whether you get back up, whether you believe you can keep going. Last night in Manchester, New Hampshire, I had the honor of being introduced by an extraordinary man, Kieser Khan, whose son, Captain Khan, was killed serving our country in Iraq. You may remember Mr. Khan's speech at the Democratic Convention. And again last night, he reminded us of the responsibility we all share to protect... You are watching BBC World News and uh, what you're seeing in the two screens, of course, the two main contenders to become the 45th President of the United States of America. And it's past midnight now in the two cities that they are speaking in. Raleigh, North Carolina is where Hillary Clinton of the Democratic Party is in Grand Rapids, Michigan where the Republican Party's nominee, Donald Trump, is speaking. Uh, we've been hearing from both candidates. Let's return for the moment to Donald Trump, who's been talking for more than 20 minutes now. He was murdered by an illegal immigrant, deported at least five times. A Trump administration will end this nightmare of violence and end it quickly. We will stop illegal immigration, deport all criminal aliens, and dismantle every last criminal gang and cartel threatening our wonderful citizens. We're going to do it easily, quickly. We will also repeal the Obama-Clinton defense sequester and rebuild our badly depleted military. There haven't been many times when we needed more. I'm honored to have the endorsement of more than 200 top admirals and generals and 22 Medal of Honor recipients, and that list just grew a lot larger today. <laughs> Hillary Clinton and our failed establishment have dragged us into foreign wars that have made us less safe, shipped our wealth overseas to other countries, and left our borders at home totally wide open. That will change when we win the presidency. That will change. That will change. It has to change. It has to change. From now on, it's going to be America first. America first. And just in summing up, to all Americans I say, it is time for change. It is time for leadership. Just think about what we can accomplish in the first 100 days of a Trump administration. We're going to have the largest tax cut since Ronald Reagan. And Hillary wants to raise your taxes. 
We will eliminate every unnecessary job-killing regulation. We'll cancel every illegal Obama executive order. We will protect religious liberty. And yesterday, it was Billy Graham's 98th birthday, meaning an hour ago. Yesterday, meaning an hour ago. But he's a great, great man, and his son, Franklin, has been so amazing. But I wanted to mention Billy Graham, 98 years old, amazing. Donald Trump is speaking in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where actually President Obama was just a few hours ago in Michigan. But let's go back to North Carolina now, an important state this is in rally there. Hillary Clinton is speaking, and we can listen to her now. If you believe we need more fairness in our economy, to raise the minimum wage, because no one who works full time should still be in poverty, then you have to vote. If you believe we need to do more to support working families with affordable child care, paid leave, and equal pay for women, then you have to vote. And remember, when my opponent says, every time I talk about these issues, that I'm playing the woman's card. Well, you know what I say, deal me in. And if you believe, if you believe all kids deserve good schools with good teachers, no matter what zip code they live in, you have to vote. And if you believe college should be more affordable, you have to vote. Hillary Clinton getting lots of cheers because, of course, she is speaking specifically to her supporters. And it's almost as if they're slugging it out uh, live on television, not that one knows what the other is saying, although the messages are certainly not new. Let's go to Mr. Trump. As one people under one God saluting one American flag, right? I'm asking you to dream big, because with your vote, we are just hours away from the change you've been waiting for your entire life. So to every parent who dreams for their child, and to every child who dreams for their future, I say these words to you tonight. I am with you, I will fight for you, and I will win for you, I promise. To all Americans tonight, in all of our cities and in all of our towns, I pledge to you one more time, together we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. God bless you, everybody. Go to bed. Go to bed right now. Get up and vote. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Michigan. We love you. We'll be back. Let's win. Thank you. So surely that must be the last Donald Trump uh, speech and certainly last political rally before he himself casts a ballot, which will happen in his hometown of New York, reportedly. Let's go to Rally North Carolina, where eventually in New York, Hillary Clinton will also be there. She calls New York State her home, and she'll be casting her ballot there. But she's speaking in North Carolina. Land during exams, that's all I can say. Look, tomorrow... Tomorrow night, this election will end, but I want you to understand, our work together will be just beginning. We have to
to bridge the divides in this country. As the Bible says, we have to repair the breaches. We've got to be willing to start listening to each other again, respecting each other again. And I, I want to thank Gaga because she has always stood for that fundamental principle of respect. I want you to know, and I want you to spread the word, I do want to be president for all Americans, not just some, not just the people who support me and vote for me. I want to be president for everyone, because we all have a role to play in building that better future for our country and for each of you. So, if you haven't voted yet, go to IWillVote.com. You can get all the info you need, and you can still sign up to volunteer, right? <laughs> go to HillaryClinton.com or text JOIN, J-O-I-N, to 47246, or stop by one of our offices. We would welcome you to help make sure everybody gets out to vote tomorrow. Because none of us want to wake up Wednesday morning and wish we had done more, right? And years from today, when your kids and grandkids ask what you did in 2016, when everything was on the line, you'll be able to say you voted for a stronger, fairer, better America. not walls. And where, where we prove conclusively that, yes, love trumps hate. Thank you. Let's go vote, North Carolina. God bless you. Thank you all. Clinton, who, the same as Donald Trump, is urging people to go out and vote because it is the 8th of November and it is General Election Day 2016 in the United States. One of these two will be the 45th President of the United States. And there is a former President, Bill Clinton, of course. Thomas Mann is Professor of Political Science at the University of California, Berkeley. He joins us from there now. Professor, thank you very much indeed for your time. Hillary Clinton had said that she regrets the ugliness, the antagonism of the campaign. Has it